my name is Sarisa and I'm a nurse at Inland Women's Services. And today I'm going to be talking to you about breastfeeding for mom and for babies and some of the things that you might expect when you have your baby. First of all, Enlo is considered to be a baby-friendly hospital. And what that means is that we have been certified by Baby Friendly USA to be equipped to help get breastfeeding off to a good start. And there's several ways that we do this. A few are that we educate moms and families throughout their pregnancy and in the hospital to help them um, be successful at breastfeeding. Our staff is trained and knowledgeable in breastfeeding and we really wanna help you, help you have a successful um, time with breastfeeding. So we're really there to help you in, in, in any way that we can. Uh, we also keep mom and baby together throughout the ho entire hospital stay. Uh, and also we'll provide you with resources that you can um, access if you are needing some extra help um, with your breastfeeding journey. So what are some of the benefits of breastfeeding? Well, there are several, um, but to name a few, for baby, you're going to be um, decreasing chances of obesity, uh, diabetes, lung and ear infections, bowel disease, allergies, and the, immun the immunities that your baby gets from the, the breast milk is just, just so, so wonderful for your baby. So it's really a good thing to be doing that for your baby. It also has been shown to have higher IQ and vision testing um, in children, uh, and also for bonding for mom and for baby. Um, and for mom, it's also going to be decreasing chances of ovarian and breast cancer later in life, and also osteoporosis. You're going to be keeping those bones nice and dense. And also, there is a natural bleeding that occurs after a delivery of the baby, and breastfeeding is actually going to help decrease that bleeding by helping your uterus cramp and, and contract after delivery. And some moms, it can help to get you back to a pre-pregnancy weight as well. Uh, the economy environment, well, it's free, right? That's great. And also you're going to have less doctor visits because you are giving so many of those great immunities to your baby, which also means less time that you're going to be missing work. And for the environment, less waste. Can't beat that. That's great. So skin to skin, this is when baby's born, baby's going to come out and go right up onto your chest. And that is the great spot for baby to be naked against your naked chest with a nice warming blanket. And that's the best place for them to be when they transition into the outside world. And that's also gonna help breastfeeding get off to a good start. That first hour of baby being against your skin, she can smell you, she smells your breast. It actually smells like amniotic fluid. They can see your breast that they're gonna want to do to get to that breast and have that first feeding. If they're struggling a little bit or not really wanting to, the nurses will be there to help you um, get baby attached and, and help that breastfeeding start. Um, it's gonna regulate the temperature and the blood sugar of your baby. And of course, keep baby calm and comforted. They were inside of mom this whole time and now they're outside being comforted by mom. It's just the best place. And again, bonding is really great. And skin to skin can be done at any time. Um, we talk about that first hour of skin to skin, but really anytime your baby's having um, a hard time staying calm or you're having a hard time getting baby to the breast, get baby naked and put baby naked on your chest. And that can really help baby get calm and help with breastfeeding. So rooming in, this is what I was talking about in the beginning, that the baby is gonna be staying in the room with the family in the entire hospital stay. Um, if the baby does need to go out of the room for any reason, the parents are always welcome to accompany their child. Uh, this is really important to have baby in the room with you so that you can learn how to care for your baby. You can't imagine going home and saying, what do I do now? So it's really nice to be in the hospital. You have the staff, you have um, other people, your baby's family there that can help you as well. So it's really great to um, learn how to care for your baby. Also, your baby's going to recognize your voice. So they'll get to learn you as well. A really important reason for having baby in the room with you is for learning those early feeding cues. So you may hear or sucking on the hand and that's baby telling you that she's hungry. So that is when you want to get baby to the breast. So you avoid those, that crying stage was a, a later stage of being hungry um, so that you can avoid that and have a calm, more easy time getting baby to the breast. And again, if you miss those early cues and baby was crying, go skin to skin, help baby get calm and you'll have a much better time breastfeeding. Another thing of learning those early feeding cues and getting baby to the breast early is you're doing what's called feeding on demand or baby led feeding. You're having baby tell you when they're hungry. You're not feeding on a schedule. So baby's hungry, you feed baby. So this next slide just shows you a um, picture about 
to just see it more visual. So feeding on a schedule. So you're feeding every two to three hours. You can see with these Cheerios, they're the same time of feed, they're the same amount of feed, and it's just very rigid. Um, babies don't feed like that. They're hungry just like we are. We, we get hungry at different times of the day and um, babies are no different. So if you can see here with the blueberries, there's big blueberries, there's little blueberries. They're spaced at different times. So you may have what's called cluster feeding where they're feeding every hour and that's normal and okay. If they're showing you those signs, then that's the time to get baby to the breast. So feeding on demand. So how long are you meant to breastfeed? We only want to get breast milk for the first six months of life. And then you're going to add complementary solids throughout into their second year of life. So it is recommended that you um, breastfeed all into that second year of life as well as giving solid foods. It's been really great for your baby. Um, and if you exclusively, exclusively breastfeed, that's going to increase your milk supply. There's a lot of supply and demand that goes on here. So the more you have the baby at the breast, the more milk you're going to make. That stimulation is really key. So what happens if you give your baby something other than breast milk? Well, what that can do is decrease that milk supply because again, it's the supply and demand relationship. So if you're not having the baby at the breast as often because you're giving something else, then your body is gonna say, oh, I can stop making so much milk. So you wanna have lots of stimulation, baby at the breast every time she's showing you that she's hungry to increase that milk supply. And also if you give something else, they might become less content with breastfeeding because they have something else that might be easier or taste different and they might not like that as much. And again, all those wonderful nutrients and immunities will be less and so they could be more susceptible to illness. And in the hospital, we don't give formula or pacifiers or bottles unless it's medically indicated or if a mother makes an informed decision to feed her baby formula. And then of course we will support that choice and um, just give you some information on how to feed your baby formula um, in a safe way. But of course, we'll support that after we give you some education on um, how to do that. Next, I want to talk about laboring um, without medication. So there has been shown that babies that are born after an unmedicated labor do tend to be more alert and have an easier time breastfeeding because they are able to um, be alert for that breast right away. Um, but of course, there is medication if you do need it. But hopefully what we can do through this here is teach you how to break the fear, pain, and tension cycle. So it, it, it can be fearful to know that you're going into something that's gonna be painful and that is gonna be hard. Um, of course, that's gonna be hard for most people. But the best thing that you can do is go into it with a relaxed and positive energy about you, knowing that I can get through this, my body's meant to do this. Um, and using the resources and the tools around you to do it and you'll get through just fine. Um, so knowledge is also key. That's why it's great to be learning about this early in your pregnancy. So you have time to give yourself that knowledge of what to expect in labor. What do you want out of labor? How can I get through this in the best way for me? Um, so knowledge is key. If you can take a class, um, do your own research, it will really, really help you. Um, guided imagery, focal points, Bringing yourself to that happy place can be really good. It really does help to just keep yourself in a positive space. Um, position, position changes will be very important. You don't want to stay in one spot. So up and out of bed and moving is great. Having gravity work with you and putting that um, baby having pressure onto your cervix is going to be helpful for that progression of labor. Um, concentration. Massage is wonderful. It might feel good at one point and not another. And that's okay. You just let the people around you know what feels good and what doesn't so they can continue helping you um, be relaxed, really. Um, breathing is so great um, to help you through these contractions. So I like to tell people to take a nice cleansing breath when you feel a contraction coming on. And what that looks like is you feel that tightening. You can tell that it's a contraction is coming. So you take a nice deep breath just to get yourself ready mentally, physically, get a big surge of oxygen to your baby for that contraction, and then breathe through your contraction. And then at the end of your contraction, take another nice deep breath, another cleansing breath to help you know that you got through that one, another big dose of oxygen to your baby, and then you can rest until your next contraction. Um, that breathing, relaxation, and positivity goes such a long way um, in breaking this fear, pain, and tension cycle. And for partners that are there helping, something that you can do to help mom be relaxed is if you see her doing this or you see her tensing up, 
just put a hand on the shoulder, just look at her and, you know, just relax and just reminding her to relax her body, breathe into your body and relax. It's going to be so helpful for you. Um, also, there are birthing balls available. There's a jacuzzi with jets that we have available. Um, and again, up and moving out of bed um, is going to be helpful. If you do decide that you need medicine, we do have medicine available as well um, that you can ask for. Um, we have IV medication and also an epidural that's available if that's the route that you do decide to go to. Okay, but we want to help you. If you do want an unmedicated birth, then we definitely have ways to help you do that. So here are just a few resources that I put on here. Um, the first one, the enlo.org slash baby, which you would have used to get to this video. Um, just play around on that website. There are so many good um, articles and um, there's some pictures that we put on there about different labor positions and um, breastfeeding information. There's just so much. So you can really go all along that, that uh, website and get a lot of information. Uh, baby Friendly USA, I put on here just so that you can um, if you're interested in knowing more of what that means and what we've done to become baby friendly, also a great resources to learn about uh, breastfeeding. Again, if you can want to take a childbirth preparation course, Enla Mother Baby Education Center does offer some and would highly recommend it. Um, or I'm sure there's other ones in town that you would be able to find as well, um, local resources, but that's one that we offer here at Enla. Uh, La Leche League is a great resource that's in Chico. Uh, Better Babies is available in Chico. And then WIC, Women, Infants, and Children, is all over um, on all the surrounding areas. So um, you, can, you can look that up in your area, what town you live in. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and learning about breastfeeding. And if, as always, if you have questions, you can always ask at your prenatal appointments and we'll do our best to get you that information. Um, and um, then when you're in the hospital, again, we have those resources for you to help you be successful at breastfeeding. That's what we really want to do. So thank you so much. Have a great day.